Welcome back everybody. So this is our last piece for Edvard Grieg. We need to remember his wife, who played such a significant role in his life, and like any person whose spouse would never play such a significant role in your life. If you're devoted to them and you will stick with them till till the death do you part. So she was a talented vocalist and was well known for her ability to interpret a piece, meaning if a piece was sad, she could really bring out the sadness in the piece. If it was happy, she could bring it out and allow the listener to experience that mood, which is very important when it comes to pieces of art. You want the person who's seeing it or the person who's listening it or the person who's experiencing it to experience that emotion that you intended behind it. So she was a great source of inspiration for Edward. And as his career went on, they decided to settle down in Oslo, in Norway, which is the capital of Norway. And things, unfortunately, were not too great on the side of them settling down at home. They actually suffered a tragedy that was when they tried to have children, they had a small baby girl who was called Alexandra. And at the age of one years old, she got meningitis and she passed on, which was very sad and would play a significant mark in their marriage. So as they process this disappointment in their own ways, because each person processes the disappointment depending on how the person is, Edward left for months at a time to tour Europe, leaving his wife Nina at home all alone in the Scandinavian cold winter, which is incredibly cold and very intense and not easy to go through, especially alone, knowing that your partner is out, out in a different country. So things weren't so good for them at that point in time. However, there was, a, there was hope. They did not give up, to each, give up on each other, but remained committed in the marriage despite the pain and sadness of loss. And one thing to note, they actually couldn't have any more children. So Alexandra was the only child they had and they couldn't have any more, so they didn't have any more. So despite even not having the family they longed for, there was hope and they remained committed to each other. Edward wrote this piece, Wedding Day at Trold Haugen. Trold Haugen was the name of the house that they moved into in Oslo, Norway. And he wrote this as a 25th we anniversary wedding gift to his bride. And it was to pay homage to the long-lasting marriage that transcended tragedy and also dedicated to the place they loved. So two very important things. Dedicated to the long-lasting marriage and dedicated to the place they loved. When you listen to this piece, it actually sounds very jolly in the beginning, but midway you can see the intensity and it's a small element that really does describe the emotion. It's a part that I really like right in the middle of the piece, before it gets back to the main melody later on in the piece. And yeah, played a very significant mark in his life, especially to his devotion to his wife. Edward, throughout his life, was a very sickly man, meaning he, had, he suffered through a lot of illnesses and ailments, particularly to his lungs and his stature, so he'd often, often spend a lot of time in spas just to reclaim some humidity into his body and just to help his breathing and just to help his overall health. But eventually, at not a bad age, but a decent age, a decent old age of 64, he passed away from heart failure in outside, but just at Bergen, which is right outside their home, and he died of heart failure. His last words, after all the ailments he'd gone, he'd gone through, was, well, if it must be so. And those were his last words before he passed on. His wife outlived him by 28 years. She was a widow for 28 years. And when she died, the way he was buried was he was cremated and he was, his ashes were stored in a pot, which were then stored in a crypt. And a crypt is like a small chamber within a mountain or a cleft. So often underneath churches, underneath museums, you'd find some crypts that would contain coffins or sarcophaguses for like ancient Egyptian pharaohs. They, they were stored there and kept there. So his was on the side of a mountain in Norway and his was stored in a pot. And then when his wife died, the same was done to her, stored in the crypt, in the chamber. And that's the end of the story of Edward Grieg. So we're going to attach a few assignments for you guys. They're not long, they're not too, too heavy. So have fun with them. It's going to be exploring a lot of where he's from. And it's also going to have the story of Pierre Hunt, not Gent. And yeah, have fun with it and listen to some more pieces by him. Check him out and we'll see you guys in the next lesson. See you there.